Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is Professor Milligan, and welcome to another Wall Street Wednesday. Today is January 3rd, 2021, and I know you guys have a lot of questions, a lot of things concerning um, some of the stocks and what's going on with GameStop and some other things. So I'm excited about today. We got some things to get to. I'm going to cover a lot of things. So I'm just giving people a few minutes to come on before I start chatting it up. Um, we're also, but don't forget, we're also in the middle of earnings season. So do not forget where we're at. So if you can take advantage of earnings seasons and welcome to all you guys and um, welcome, welcome, welcome. So again, I'm going to get into it. Um, one of the things I'm going to try and do now, I, I, some people have talked about that my call is too long. It's okay. What I'll do is I'm going to start talking. I'm going to talk about several different topics. Um, again, hopefully um, you'll find them all interesting and you'll stay for the whole show. But if you don't, I understand. But the reason being is there's a lot to cover in a short period of time. And, um, you know, the other thing, too, for guys who, you know, you can always you can always just go back and watch this on IGTV. You can also, I'll post this on my YouTube channel. So you can also watch it on YouTube, which means that you can pause it, go back, leave it, come back. So that's everything. All right. So let me start with a couple of things real quick before I, I jump into the heated, heated discussions. And one of the things I have been um, neglecting the last couple of weeks because of busyness is just talking about commodities. So real quick, I'm going to read you my commodity list. I know a couple of you trade commodities, so I'm going to read you my commodity list. Now, understand, my commodity list is based upon fundamentals. Um, when I trade commodities, I do fundamentals as well as fundamentals as well as technical analysis. So in other words, if I say um, I like a stock, I think you should go long, uh, excuse me, uh, commodity, that means I like it fundamentally. Then I'm going to check the charts and watch it, and when it breaks certain areas, certain resistance, certain support, certain moving averages, then I'll actually go long. So right now, um, what you could actually say is that a lot of these a lot of these commodities are on my, what I call, watch list. So this is what I'm watching for. So let me read them to you real quick. Um, again, um, I'm going to read all the short ones first. So these are commodities that I believe are short. One of them is my one of my favorites to trade, and that is corn. So for those who don't know, corn has run from basically 350 to over 550. That's a $10,000 move on those option contracts. All right. That's a $10,000 move in corn over the last basically three, four, three, four months. Um, I think corn now is overextended. Um, the commercials are selling it up here at this price. So I would wait for it to break the 10 day moving average again. But so here's my shorts corn, wheat, both wheats, high grade copper, and cotton. Um, all those are shorts. On the long side, on the long side, the U.S. dollar. Now, I talked about that before. I think the dollar is going to be strong. I think because what's going on globally, that um, a flight to quality, there's going to be strength in the dollar. I also believe that our economy is going to turn around. And I shouldn't say turn around, but I think our economy is fine. I do not think we're going to go into another recession. Um, uh, my indicators don't indicate that. The other thing on, on the long side is, the Mexican pesos. Now, I put this call out maybe six or seven months ago, and the pesos ran. Um, so I've got another buy recommendation on the pesos. And then, believe it or not, the 30-day Fed funds rate. So I believe that the 30-day Fed funds rate, um, Fed funds future is going to go higher, as well as the Treasury bonds going to go higher. So what this is telling me, um, basically, the futures market is telling us is that is that prices are going up, which means rates are going down. Now, believe it or not, I'm not, I'm not sure how much lower they can go, but rates are going down. Um, that's what the commodities market is looking at. Now, um, while I'm on here, I see that um, Ham is talking about the VIX. Some of you know that last week I posted that the VIX gave me a buy signal. Um, that was last, I believe it was last Thursday. I think I got it. Um, and I said the market's going to run from there, so the market's run. I still think the market's going to run. Now, the VIX has pulled back. And some of you have, have heard me before, or some of my former students know, that one of my leading indicators is the VIX, and the VIX gave us a buy signal. Now, again, this buy signal on the VIX is a short-term buy signal, 30 days. 
And right now the VIX is giving us a buy. So I would, um, as I said then, I went long the market and I would stay long the market. So again, just a quick update. I gave you some commodities to talk about, to keep your eye on. I also talked about the VIX, which means I think the market uh, is going to stay up. Now, again, the VIX is a 30-day leading indicator for me. Um, I'm not saying the market's going to, you know, the VIX is not giving me a read that the market's going to be up uh, for the next six months. I do believe the market's going to be up for the next six months, but that, not because of the VIX. All right. Now, um, I, I, you know, you know, the... Um, the uh, elephant in the room, you know what I mean? So let, let's talk about it, GameStop. So one of the things I did with GameStop was, and I'm looking for it now, of course, they, they move things on me. There it is. So, you know, the first question I'm going to ask you guys, I'm, I'm about to put up some pictures. The first question I'm going to ask you guys, and hopefully you can see this, is, <laughs> is GameStop... A short squeeze or is GameStop in a bubble or is it both? So what I, what I, one of the things I wanted to do was first and foremost is I wanted to show you historically, we've had bubbles going back to the 1600s. The first financial bubble was the tulip mania, which is if you're looking at my chart I just put up here is the one you're looking at on the, on the left. And as you can see that when that bubble finally burst, it literally went straight down. In fact, when the tulip bubble burst, it almost bankrupted um, the whole country of Holland. The other one up here in the middle is the dot-com bubble. Again, um, some of you are way too young to see, uh, have been around this, but the dot-com bubble, again, burst in 1999, 2000, 2001, that bubble burst. And so, a number of those stocks um, got got really, uh, the word I want to use is destroyed. And the third one that you're looking up here is Bitcoin. For them, those of you who don't remember, Bitcoin was in, a, was in a bubble and that bubble burst. And Bitcoin, let me see if I can find my Bitcoin, my other Bitcoin. Bitcoin got, um, I took it on the chin. So I just bring it up to show you what it looks like when you have a bubble that bursts. Now I believe that um, I believe that let's see oh I can't see it all. Well, I believe that um, GameStop is in a bubble, and that bubble was created by a short squeeze. What you're looking at now, it doesn't matter what the stock is. I, I could care less, and I'll post this because I know it's hard to see right now. But what you're looking at is I just pull this off of Yahoo Finance. I went and found one of the stocks that has a huge short position in it. And I wanted to go over these stats with you so you can actually understand it. So you can understand what causes a bubble and where bubbles come from. So bear with me a second. I'm going to go into that. I'm just pulling up another chart on my, of course. All right. So here's what you're looking at. Um... What you're looking at right now, I have circles. You'll see that the, the, the shares short. There's 74 million shares short. Now, the number underneath that, your short ratio, is 6.2. What that means is 7, 74 million shares short, based on the average daily volume of this stock, it would take 6.2 days of nothing but straight buying to cover the short position in this stock. Let me say it again. Based upon the number of shares short, 74 point, basically let's say, say 70, 75 million. The average daily volume for the last last um, 10 days has been, um, you know, is up there. So all they're saying is if you take the average num volume per day and divide that into the number of shares that are short, if there was nothing but short buying, it would take 6.2 days to cover this short. All right, let me take this. So, and then you'll see below that, let me talk about that below that. You'll see the float as, excuse me, the number of shares short as a percentage of the float. Now, the float is how many shares are actually traded in the public. The, the float is usually less than the shares outstanding. And the reason being is the corporation might hold some stock or have some stock. So what you're looking at here is 82% of the float is short. 
61% of the shares outstanding are short. In other words, this is a huge short position. Now, the reason why I didn't put the stock up here is because I don't want you to focus on the stock right now. I want you to focus on what's going on. And another thing, too, is I'm not projecting or predicting that there's going to be a short squeeze here. Now, for those who don't understand, when you're short of security, you make money when it drops, you lose money when it goes up. All right. So all these investors, these 75 million um, shares that they're short, they believe the price of the stock is going to go down and they're going to make their money as it goes down. Now, I'm going to pull up, as I explain this, a chart on a stock that was in a short squeeze. I have a, several of them. I'm going to pull up this one, InfoSpace. So what happened with InfoSpace? No, InfoSpace wasn't a short squeeze. I take that back, so I'm not going to use InfoSpace. Um, I want to use something that was a short squeeze. I don't know if I have any... Here you go. And by the way, short squeezes occur and bubbles occur in a number of different markets. So don't think it's only in the stock market. What you're looking at is natural gas. Those three spikes were all short squeezes. So let me explain what happens on the short squeeze as you look at that. The stock starts to drift up off of natural buying. In other words, investors who think the stock is a buy and they want to own it. Or in this case, natural gas is a buy they want to own it. As they buy it and it starts to go up, it forces the people that are short. They get a phone call from their broker. And basically, the broker is saying to them two things. Mr. Milligan, the stock is starting to go up. In this case, natural gas is starting to go up. Um, you are getting a margin call. You only can shorten the margin account, which means that I don't have enough equity in my account. They want me to either put more money in or close the position. So... If I decide to close the position, which is what I always recommend, it means that besides the natural buying that's coming in, these people that are short the stock, they have to buy it in. That's the only way they can close out that position. And as they start to buy it in and the natural buying comes, it get, the stock gets squeezed up. The security gets squeezed up. That's your short squeeze. Now, the challenge you run into is that when it hits these upper prices, there's nothing fundamentally behind it other than the fact that these investors were closing out their position and with them closing out their position and natural buying, it squeezed the stock price up. Once they, all the shorts have covered and they stop buying, that security is going to come back down. They all do it. The question you got to ask yourself after it comes back down is this a legitimate business or commodity or asset I want to own that has the potential to make money going forward in the future? Or is this a short squeeze on a really bad company that after the short squeeze is over, it's going to go right back and continue to keep going south? So part of this means that as you look at GameStop, and one of the things that makes me cringe, and I'm going to say this to you. Let me get out of this so you can see me. I'm going to say this to you. When I was in my 20s and I was actively trading and running my hedge fund, I'd have been all over GameStop. But again, as a trader, not as an investor, when I hear people saying that I'm going to hold on to my GameStop stock until it goes back up to where it was, I cringe. Why? Because the only way it's going to go back up to where it was if another short squeeze comes. GameStop's business model is horrible. All right. If you're going to get caught in a short squeeze and make your money trading short squeezes, understand you still have to look at the underlying business. Is the company going to be in business in the long run? When I look at GameStop, there's nothing that says this is a business that just had a short squeeze and is squeezing the shorts and we need to stay long in the business. Now, I'm going to show you. I, I know I have it here somewhere. I'm looking for it, but I can show you a short squeeze on Tesla. I think I have it up here. I hope I have it up here. Maybe I don't have it up here. Um, I thought I had it. But Tesla's going through a short squeeze. Um, I don't think that's Tesla. That is, 
Hold on a second. I'll tell you exactly who that is. I believe that you're looking at right now. I'm pulling up. The, I'm looking at the bigger chart. Yep. All right. What you're looking at is Bitcoin. What you're looking at is Bitcoin. And if you guys go back a few years back, most of you were around in trading, you know that Bitcoin went on that run and it, it, it just ran. And part of that run was it was running because of natural buying that people thought Bitcoin was the place to be. At the same time, you had a whole bunch of investors that when they saw this thing start to um, start to move, they said, this is a short. And they played it to the short side. And when those shorts got squeezed and they started to cover, they ran Bitcoin up like they did. And you'll see that after the shorts stopped covering, you see that Bitcoin struggled and actually dropped back to where it came before the run came on the shorts. Um, for the short squeeze. Now, Bitcoin is a legitimate product and a legitimate company, legitimate product that's going to be here for a while. So though, as you guys know, Bitcoin did recover. So for those who actually brought Bitcoin and held it, it worked for you. But not all of them recover. Again, look at the quality of the company that you're talking about that got caught in the short squeeze. I've got some more for you. Which one is this one? Um, I already put this one in for space. This one came during the dot-com bubble. All right, it ran. It ran. And you can see what happened. And then guess what happened? As soon as the short squeeze got done, and again, what's, I, I, I'm not here to tell you what's going to start the run. Um, the dot-com bubble started for because people just wanted to buy dot-coms. Um, we've had bubbles in other industries. Um, so in this case, what short start started the bubble in um, in GameStop? It was a short squeeze. That's what started the bubble. All right. I am always telling you, if you're going to trade these bubbles, I've been around this for a long time. Trade them. Do not hold them long. Do not look at them as an investment. Take your profits. Cut your losses. Do not play with these things. They're not toys. These are not investments. All right? They're not. And for those, when they see it spike like that, again, like I showed you on Bitcoin, it took several years for Bitcoin to get back to that old high. Now, another one of the charts I wanted to pull up is eToys. Where's my eToy? eToy is, there's eToy. Another one. Ramby, it was a dot-com stock. It ran, short squeeze came, squeezed it up, and look what happened to it. Let me give you another one. What you're looking at now is oil. Again, back in 2006, some of you might remember, oil got up to $160 a barrel. $160 a barrel. All right, that's what it got up to. And then guess what? The bubble finally burst. What caused the bubble to burst? Um, well, technically what caused the bubble to burst was um, they raised interest rates, which is one of the reasons that started the whole debacle of 2008, that correction. They had to raise interest rates in 2006 to fight oil. And you can see that bubble there. And then you can see there was another one recently in 19, it's going to be in 2020. We have bubbles all the time in every market. I like this one because let me explain to you what this one's doing. This one... I found the individuals trying to explain what to do during the bubble and how they work. And what's interesting right now um, is if you look at the top of that chart, you'll see what they call a bear trap. And that's when this thing finally peaked out, started to pull back, and then had a little pop, a little run there at the end, but the run was not able to get back to that old high and get through it. And then at that point, it just fell apart and it came down. And then you'll see that typically what when they bubble burst, whether it be the market or whether it be individual security, typically when it bursts, it's going to go down below um, fundamental value. It's going to oversell. And then it's going to go. All right. So one of the things I want to talk about again is, and you guys can look at this, look at the chart on GameStop. It's It literally is filling all the criteria of a bubble. All right. So I want to just basically address that. Bring that up. Um, so now I'm looking at some questions. You, you, you know, you guys, 
when something runs like this, first and foremost, you got to figure out why it's running. And then if you decide that you want to play this game of the, on the short squeeze when they start to do that, you must be quick. You have to be quick. Um, I've traded these markets before like this. I traded the dot-com bubbles really successfully. And the reason why I was able to trade it, again, I was much more active then. But the reason why I was able to trade it was I understood that when that bubble burst, this thing is going down. So I watched them every day. I traded them, watched them. And eventually when the bubble did burst, a lot of people lost a lot of money. This is the reason why you're seeing all the conversation about maybe they should stop this. Maybe they should make the brokerage firms put in more cash. Maybe the brokerage firms should not use margin. What they're trying to do is they're trying to do two things. One, protect the brokerage firms. And they're also trying to tr protect the investor. Because there's a bunch of people out there that don't understand that when this bubble burst, there is no soft landing. There is no, it's going to trend down. It's going to come down fast and quick. And if you're the person who says, well, I'm just going to hold it till it goes back to what I paid for it, you're in for a surprise because one of these times it's going to pull back and it's not going to come back. If you want to trade it, if you think it's going to go back through that old high, then when it starts to go down, cut your losses, get out. And then when you see it start to move up again, buy it then. The other thing I would say to you is I would not take home, take these home overnight unless you've got a huge profit um, to, uh, that you're working with. I would not take them overnight. Why the options on GameStop going down as the stock goes up in price? Because the options have so much premium in them, it's scary. Um, right after I got off the call with you guys last week, I looked at the 330 puts. The 330 puts, um, the stock closed, GameStop closed at 333. The 330 puts that expired in two days, you know, they were weekly puts, were $9,600. What that means is for me to make money on that stock, I needed the stock to drop by $96 to get in the money with those options. If you don't understand what it means to be in the money with options, then you shouldn't be trading them right now. But again, all I'm saying is before you started making money in those options that you paid nine grand for, almost well, $9,600 for, the stock had to drop 96 points for that to be in the money. All right. Now, the options expired nine days from that. The following Friday, which is this Friday. Now, I looked at that last Wednesday. They were 165,000, um, excuse me, 16,500. 16, that means I needed the stock to come down $165 from $330 for this thing to be in the money. All right. That's why the options became expensive. The options became expensive because the traders put so much premium in them because they did not want to deal with them. And by the way, when I talked about that $9,600 put, that was the offer price. The bid price was $2,000 less, sitting there at basically at $7,000. That was the spread. In other words, the market makers for options backed off these things, put a lot of juice into them, a lot of premium, a lot, a lot, a lot of premium, and they then they spread them out. And the reason why they spread them was they tried to, they spread them out to slow down the trading. Think about it. If you brought that option at the moment you brought that option at ninety six hundred dollars, if you turn around and say, "Oh, I made a mistake and sold it," you you lost. You were down over two thousand dollars, close to three thousand dollars. That's why they spread it to slow down the trading in them. All right, these are the mechanics of the market. These are the things that you guys got to know if you're going to trade these things, all right? Um, I got more pictures of other companies, but right now I think I, I think I beat this horse up enough. I beat this topic up enough. Um, I'll post a bunch of pictures later on that you guys can take a look at and see. But again, and I'm putting one up here right now. Which one is this? This one is, um, this one is what? Um, I think I already had this one. That's Bitcoin. I'm looking for, I want to show you one other one when I can find it. Ah, there it is. Eastman Kodak. Eastman Kodak has had short squeezes before. There it is. All right. Now, before I, before, I'm gonna, um, before I leave this topic, let me say one other thing. Understand what's going on. 
there, there, there's a group of investors. Again, you know the you know the suspects, the ones on Reddit, the ones on the Wall Street, you know, blog talk that you guys follow that you see. And here's the deal: what these guys are doing, and they're smart guys. I don't agree with they're breaking the law. What I, you know, what they're doing is a gray area. But stock manipulation in this manner has been around for a long time. So here's what they do. They do their research, and like I just did, they go out and find stocks that have huge short positions in them. The next thing they do is they look for stocks that are low in price. Now, I'm not saying they wouldn't do it with a high price stock, but it's easier to move a low price stock. It's easier to move a $2 stock than it is to move a $200 stock. All right? So they're looking for a low price stock that fits the criteria that has a heavy short position that would take three, four, five, even longer, six days, like I showed you, seven days to cover. That's just off of, 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 of regular volume. Um, it does not take into account natural buying. Then what they do is they're taking their position in the stock. And as they're taking their position in the stock, they're telling the world that this stock should be brought. Now, the people that are following them on Reddit, they're not sophisticated investors. They really don't care. All they know is that when we come together as a group, a herd, all right, and Wall Street is a herd mentality, but when we come to together as a group, as a herd, and we start to buy, we can push this thing. Now, as they start to push it because of their buying, that's when the shorts start getting squeezed and the shorts have to cover. Now, what you saw with GameStop was that several big hedge funds had huge short positions in the stock. Now, for me personally, I don't know why they were shorting the stock when the stock basically had come from, you know, basically had come from, uh, well, I know why they're shorting it, don't get me wrong. But the stock had come up from, you know, basically the $40, $50 range several years ago down to, you know, 4 or $5 a share. So we know the company's in, in trouble. They were shorting it, I guess, looking for the thing to go to go out to zero. I don't recommend shorting low price stock because of short squeezes and also because they could get taken over. So anyway, what happened is, as, is, as, as, as what I'm saying to you is, at that point, when they got out there and they started touting this and taking that position, they end up be forcing the shorts to cover. And as the shorts started to cover, you guys kept buying. Natural buying came in. They couldn't find stock to buy, which means that they had to raise the price to find to attract people to sell it so we could buy it. And that's how that squeeze, as well as what they did with them basically talking about, let's buy it. Let's push it. Let's get some strength behind it. I've seen this before over the years. This is not new. All right. The SEC is upset about it, some financial institutions, but again, it's not new. For those who are still holding, because I'm getting some questions on this, I repeat, I would not be a long-term holder in GameStop. All right? This is a trading stock. Trade it. There's The value is not there to hold this stock up to a, a three. It's not a $300 stock. It's not a $400 company. Now, Tesla went through the same thing. But the difference is, Tesla is a growing company with a growing product and a growing market. So Tesla, the reason why people were short Tesla is because they didn't know if Tesla was going to be able to fulfill their obligation, fulfill in terms of manufacturing number of cars, fulfill in terms of building factories to actually sell these cars. But as you can see that they're fulfilling and the, the market is, has an appetite for electric cars. The market has no appetite for GameStop. What product or service do they sell that the market wants to buy? And it's really video games. And we know that you guys now stream your video games. You're not buying the DVDs. So GameStop right now is a company that's trying to figure out how to stay in business. All right. So I don't know if I want to own that company. The only reason why I wouldn't short it right now is because you can't find stock to short. All right. And no telling when this bubble is going to burst. I told you the story about the hedge fund that lost all his money basically by shorting. He went long the dot-com. No, he shorted the dot-com bubble in the middle of the dot-com bubble. Then when he realized that they were still going higher, he said, well, I know what I'll do. I'll close up my short position and go long. So he closed out his short position and went long. And six months, a hedge fund manager lost $10 million cash. Lost all of his money. Actually, it was $20 million. $20 million. Lost it all. In six months, all right? All because he was trying to trade a bubble. He was trying to position himself in a bubble. You cannot short a bubble before the bubble bursts. 
It's a, it, it, you, you're actually, if you do that, you're helping to perpetuate the run because as the stock starts to run and you shorted it, and you, and you only been shorted, I shorted Professor Millen because it was going higher. Well, if you short and it keeps going higher, you're gonna be forced to cover that short, which means you're gonna push it higher yourself. That's what's going on. All right, um, I think I beat that up enough. I'm gonna leave it alone. Um, let's see, just to let you guys know what I've been doing, I am short, I am short, short, um, symbol, symbol, symbol. Um, the symbol is, hold on, I got a symbol is, um, I type it here. So I am short RVMD. I went short RVMD. Short, they're doing a secondary tomorrow, being priced tonight for tomorrow. I went short that. The other thing, I just brought some more. Well, I should take that back. I went long. I was long upstart, as you guys know. It's one of the stocks I was long. I cut. I took my profits. Not cut loss. I took my profits. Stock came back in. I just went long again upstart when it broke through the 72. So I'm long upstart at just a hair above $72. So those are the two trades I've done. Um, those are the two trades that I've done. Um, that I'm in right now. You know, I'm talking about trades. I still have my I still have my long positions, but those are the trades I just put up. Um, somebody's asking about SNDL. Uh, bear with me a second. I'm just gonna pull up a, a longer chart. Whoa! Oh, oh, oh! I don't know what this company is, Daniel. My thoughts. Without even going any further, looking at the chart, I don't see any reason why I'd want to own this stock. No reason why to own this stock. None. Um, I'm looking at the stock back in um, September 2013, August, excuse me, 2019. The stock was as high as $13 a share. And it's done nothing but go straight down from there. Hitting a low of basically seven cents. And now it's having a little bounce here to $1.21. I do not bottom fish. I do not buy stocks that are coming off their near-term lows. I know some of you guys will say, Professor Milligan, um, you know, it's it's buy it's cheap down here. I'm gonna I'm a dollar cost average. I'm gonna buy it, and it's, as it makes its way back up, you know, on the bounce, I'll get long. Again, I am I am not somebody who, who believes in dollar cost averaging on the way down. I believe adding to positions on the way up. The other thing about me is that um, um, when you look at a stock that's come down from $13 to, to $0.07 seven cents up to $1.30, $1.21, um, as far as I'm concerned, this stock has a whole bunch of shareholders hanging above them between here and $13 a share. Just saying, when the stock gets back to what I paid for, it, I'm going to sell it. Um, I'll wait. If I had any interest, I'm not even going further. If I have any interest in SNDO, I'd buy it on the breakthrough, breakout when it goes through 13. It gets all these other investors out of the way. All right. Um, all right. Um, I'm just looking at any other questions. I don't see any other questions. AMC. AMC is the same thing. I want you to think about this. AMC ran to $20 a share. What's driving, what's driving, what's driving the business where the business value has gonna is basically between last week, you know, two weeks ago and today, the stock has gone. I'm, make sure I get my numbers right. AMC. So between, basically, if we go back, the stock was trading at four dollars a share when the breakout came. So it went from four dollars a share to twenty dollars a share. And now it's back to nine. All right. Let me ask you a question. What changed in their business? that made this company go from being worth $4 a share to being worth $20 a share, all right, even worth $9 a share. What changed in their business? More people going to the movie theater? They opened up more theaters? What changed? Nothing. 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 They're struggling to stay alive. Yep, people are owning that stock saying it's going to go back to 20 the only way it's going back to 20 is when the short squeeze, and you don't know when the short squeeze is coming because most of the shorts had to close out their position. Short squeeze. Bubble, the bubble's bursting, and it's a, it's a low-quality company. Guys, garbage. 
Garbage in, garbage out. You don't want to you don't want to hold garbage. Trade it. Take your money, short it, go long, trade it. But don't own it for long-term investment. If you get caught on the wrong side of it, cut your losses and move on. All right, one of the things you got to learn as a trader, one of the first things you got to learn as a trader is cut your losses. If you cut your losses and you were wrong, you can always go back and buy it back. You can always go back and short it again. But that one time it doesn't come back, that one time you don't cut your losses and it doesn't come back, then you're sitting there saying, I'm married to the stock now. I'm going to hold this thing till it gets back. And that's the worst thing to do. Time value of money. Well, you're sitting in there hoping GameStop or AMC goes back to $20 a share. We're trading other stuff. We're making money in other places. All right? Understand what it is. You can't take a pig and, you know, what's the saying? You can't take a pig's ear and make it into silk. Well, you can't take a, a dog of a stock and just because the short squeeze and the price ran up and also make it into a valuable company. It's a horrible company. Eastman Kodak. You guys are talking about Eastman Kodak. Eastman Kodak can't figure out how to make money. Another horrible company. So all I'm saying to you guys is, look, trade these bad boys. If you're going to do anything, trade them. All right, you get up in the morning, look at what's going on, make a decision, take your position. If you're wrong, cut your losses, get out, but trade them. Uh, let's see, tear up one of my largest core holdings, TPL. I'm going to look at it right now, Christian. Uh, bear with me a second. Uh, make me sell it, Mike. <laughs> I'm going to look at the monthly chart. Um, monthly chart. So I'm looking at it. So you, Oh, I'm sorry. Let me move my computer over. What happens is I start leaning because I can't see the full screen. Um, I'm looking at the chart, monthly chart. Hmm, not bad looking monthly chart. Although you've been in the trading range for the last couple of, couple of weeks. Um, so the first thing I would say to you, Christian, is... Um, Why'd you buy it in the first place? When did you buy it? The chart doesn't look that bad. We've had a spike near term. It doesn't look bad. Um, you just broke out through the upper end of a trading range. The trading range is between 800 and 880. Um, you just broke through that. I hate to say it this way. I'd probably stay with this. It hasn't shown any reason why to sell it. Now, I know you got earnings coming out. So the stock might have ran ahead of earnings. So, but other than that, based on just looking at the chart, I don't see any reason why I would sell this if I was long. And if it if it beats the number and starts to run, that would be a breakout. I probably would even look to get long and add to my position. So, um, that's what I would do. Let's see what else I have here. Um, and thanks for the heads up. It's one of the pipelines. So I'm not sure. I guess with TP, TPC closed down and maybe they're seeing that the demand for this is going to increase because there's less pipelines, less competition. Again, you probably know more of what's going on with the story, but the stock is definitely trading like something good's happening over the last um, last couple of months. Um, and I'm checking the, and this is a new high for the stock. So, yeah. So this is a prime example of what I was saying was when a stock, yeah, it's a new high for the stock. When a stock finally works its way through its old high and finally gets there, you can see, look at all this congestion. There's congestion in here between 400 and 800, um, basically for the whole, from um, um, basically from May 18th until it just broke through right now. It's been a huge trading range. So this, it finally fought through. I'd stay with it, Christian. All right. Um, let's see. Any other questions on any stocks? NQ. I didn't realize... <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm laughing at myself. Hold on a second. Um, NQ. Nothing came up for NQ. Are you talking about NQ? Are you talking about some other company? Um, oh, I'm sorry. Those are futures. Mini. Uh, I didn't realize those are minis. Um, for those of you who, who just thought is following me and don't understand or, or anything... Um, one of the things I'll tell you is I'm not sure if I'd buy, if I'd go long in the market now, right now, but when I got my buy signal, which I was telling you about from the VIX is when I would have went long, which was last Wednesday or Tuesday on that sell-off. Um, 
So that's what I what I do. So right right now, what you're seeing is a follow through. Basically, to, uh, hold on, let me switch to. I'm sorry, let me switch to a daily chart. Um, as far as I can see, you're, you're seeing a follow through based on what happened, um, based upon that um, that breakout. So the move, the move from last week, that sell off last week, you know, which brought you down to about the uh, the 1280 range, 12,800 range around there, 12.9. That move, that's when I got my buy signal, and that's when I went long. Now what you're looking at, you're looking to see if this thing's going to challenge the old high and break through it. Um, if you're already long, I'd stay long. If you're short, I would not. Um, I would not. Um, I would not be short. Um, I would not sell. I would just, if I'm long, I'd stay long. I'd stay long. Yeah, I think you got some more behind it. That's, you know, again, that's me. Um, so again, for those who don't know, um, for those who don't know, I have a, a, um, I use the VIX as a trading strategy. Um, I also have an investment strategy based upon the VIX. And when I get certain, um, I use the VIX and a couple other indicators together. And when I get a buy signal, I typically, when I get a buy signal on the VIX, I typically buy the Qs. I will go along um, the options on the Qs or go along the Qs or the options. The reason being is, and I know there's been a disconnect between the S&P and, and NASDAQ, but I buy the Qs because the Qs are more volatile. It gives me more bang for my buck. The, uh, the um, NASDAQ, the Qs are the NASDAQ top 100 tech stocks. So when I get a breakout like that, even though I'm the, the VIX is based on the S&P, when I get that kind of signal, I typically buy the Qs. Um, get a much big, bigger move in that. Um, let's see. Um, somebody asked me about Ford, so I'll take a look at Ford. One of the stocks that came public today was On24. I'll keep an eye on On24. The reason why I'm keeping an eye on On24, On24 is, 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 is a direct competitor of Zoom. Um, basically, they have the webinars, the seminars online, so forth, so on. The stock was priced at 50 today. I peeled at 50. I'm, I'm, hold on a second, I'll look at the price. Um, symbol is ONTF, and the stock closed at 70 bucks. They've been as high as 82 bucks, just off 82. So I'd keep an eye on that. You, well, you guys know me, I'm keeping an eye on that. And the other one that came today was TIXT. TIXT, I believe it was priced at, I believe 20. I, 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 I don't know, I have it written down. I believe it was 20, but I'm not sure. So I got to double check, but that stock also ran today. And closed at thirty dollars a share, been as high as thirty three dollars and sixty cents. So those are two IPOs that just came. Um, um, in my preliminary checking on them, they look they look pretty attractive. If I remember correctly, on I got to get this right. I believe. I believe. On twenty four, one of the big hedge funds. I don't know if that's a good name or bad name, but one of the big hedge funds said that they would be that uh, indicated they were they were buyers of the stock in the aftermarket once it came public they were looking to buy add to that position so that was also positive now again i don't know if they did but that's what they were looking at um what is it gonna what am i saying here what do i think about investing in renewable energy stocks was best long term all right so you guys asked me my opinion on certain sectors um so David, the reason why I mentioned Google was because of what was going on with um, with on on twenty four. Um, so that's why I mentioned that energy stocks. Um, I've been saying this for for the last I don't know two three years. I'm long term bearish oil. And the only way to put it, I'm long term bearish oil. As we see more and more elect electric. Um, transportation, not even cars now, electric cars, electric buses, electric, um, electric uh, airplanes. Yeah, they're talking about electric airplanes, electric trucks, self-driving trucks. All of this is just leading you to say, what's going on with the oil and gas industry? All right, we are moving away from fossil fuels. Um, as you guys know, again, I'm not getting involved in politics. Trump tried to keep fossil fuels around. And my comment about fossil fuels is, fossil fuels to me are just like when you guys would rent a, a, a DVD or rent a video from Blockbuster. Technology came and um, Blockbuster just got thrown to the side, out of business. So again, I would say to you that um, I don't have any stocks I'm looking at, but I would, I would not, I know oil's had some bounces here and there, but I, again, I'm just not a, a fan of the oil stocks, the oil companies, never have been. Um, 
traded him a few years, a few times, few years, but I've never been. And I think that, um, like I said, the, the the greening of the world, not just the America, is going to put a, a squash on the oil and gas industry. Oil industry really is. Um, so I'd move more towards the renewable energy. Again, I don't know who the players are. I guess one of the reasons why I don't know who the players are is just so you guys know, I actively trade the IPO in the secondary market. Um, I find so much opportunity there. I found so so much uh, fast ways. To, I shouldn't say fast. Easier ways, quicker ways to make some really good money. So I typically focus on that. That's what my focus has been. There have been a couple of solar companies that have gone public. Again, I believe I believe one of the ones that I'm, pun I'm punching up the symbol now. See if I'm right. I believe this one is. I'm gonna hold on a second. I'm gonna pull up the uh, the. Um, come on, Mike. I'm gonna pull up the profile on this company. Hold on a second. Uh, yep. So, here's one I am watching. S H L S. Oops. S H L S L S. There's one I'm watching. Um, it just went to an all-time high. I guess it was the other day. If I remember correctly, stock's only been around for five or six days. No, it's been a long, longer than that. Let me see. Hold on a second. I can narrow it down. Yeah, stock's only been around for a short period of time. Basically, two week, a week, two weeks. Um, stock's been as high as $40, $42 a share right now. It's at 20, uh, 37 It's pulled back a bit. There's, this is a uh, IPO. It's a startup, but, uh, but they 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 um, they play in the um, in the um, electronic balance system. They play in the the new energy sector, so that's one of the ones I, I'm looking at. Um, hold on a second. I got some comments in here. You got. I know you guys chat amongst yourself as I'm talking, so I'm just kind of reading through to see. Oh, somebody asked me my opinion on Ford. Somebody asked my opinion on Ford. Um, just looking at the monthly chart. Ooh. Ooh. All right. Um, my opinion on Ford. I wouldn't touch it. <laughs> yeah, you had a nice little run here. From basically two dollars a share up to four dollars a share. Um, let me switch it to a weekly so I can get a little more data. But as you can see, if you look at it, you've got stock hanging over. I'll switch it to a monthly. Oh let me make, no, let me make this smaller. Yeah, you you know the stock ran to four fifty back in twenty eighteen, and then failed and came right back down. The stock has a habit of running. It ran in 2015. The stock ran to basically again four dollars a share, and it failed and came back down. Um, the stock was at 550, and then came back down. And then if you go back to 20, you know, 2007. Now we're going way back, so I'm not going back that far. But you can see the stock has a history of getting up to this 450 range and, and then failing. So what it tells me is that institutions, once it gets up to this range, institutions don't have an interest. And it's interesting because when it gets up to those, their spikes, they look like they're like three or four days, you know, actually more like a month, two months worth of spikes. And then they pull back. Oh, yeah. I um, yeah. I guess what I'm saying to you is I'm not sure why I would buy a $4 stock to spike that if, it, if everything goes well, it goes from $4 to $5. I, I just don't see the upside. I don't see how much upside to, to Ford. One of the things I should tell you guys, and I say this a lot, I look at the upside potential when I take a trade. If I don't think I can make at least 20% of my money in a short period of time, or if not more, I'm not going to buy a stock at $4 to say, wow, I got the five and flip it. That's not me. If I'm buying a stock at $4 because I think that stock's on its way to $20, $25, and Ford does not have that ability to make that kind of move. So for me, I'm not taking that. And I'm not buying a $4 stock just so I can say I got 1,000 shares of a $4 stock so I can say I have a large block. Um, I'd rather own one share of, of a stock that's going up big than 1,000 shares of a $4 stock going from four to five. I mean, I'd, rather have, I'd, I'd, I'd take one share of, of uh, Amazon or Google 
If I thought it was going to go up 40, 50% in a short period of time, I'd take one share before I go out and buy a thousand or a couple thousand shares of a low price stock just because I can buy a lot of it. Um, don't fall into that trap. Don't fall into the trap. People want to say, uh, you know, they, they want to feel like they're a big swinging trader because they got blocks of a thousand, couple thousand shares. Um, it doesn't work that way. Make your money. Find good companies to make your money in. Um, what else? I always watch the VIX, but with with the Fed with the Fed intervention, I think it keeps. Uh, I keep it for momentum plays only. Usually avoiding overnight plays for the short side. Um. Hmm. All right. Cool. I um. I look at the VIX. Yeah, the Fed's pumping money into the system, but the thing I look at about the VIX is again. You're, if, um, I'm not saying you haven't, so don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you didn't, but when you analyze the VIX. What they're doing is they're, they're measuring the volatility, the price between the S&P 30-day puts and the 30-day calls. All right, that's what they're measuring. And again, my experience over the years, and I think some of you guys are going to have the same experience. As a group, as a group, most times a group of investors are always wrong. And as a saying, the market will do whatever it takes to prove the most number of people wrong. And the other thing you'll see is that typically when the VIX spikes, it's because the put premiums have gone really high compared to call premiums. And that's because put premiums went up because investors as a group have decided they need to get short the market. And again, because most times they're wrong, <laughs> when they want to get short the market, I want to get long the market. So that's what I look at when I look at the VIX. So when I say the VIX has, when I see spikes in the VIX, these spikes where they really spike up and they move and I'm looking at the S&P and I'm looking at what the S how the S&P is trading. When I get those buy signals, in most cases, what I'm thinking is the market is near-term oversold. And that's what the VIX tells me. Now, um, I didn't see him on, the, on this call today, but one of my former students is was taking what I taught him about the VIX and going to a whole nother level with it. Um, so he trades the VIX. He uses the weekly calls, weekly options to do it. Um, I typically buy more time. I'm always a guy that looks to have more time in my options. The reason why I want more time is I'm trying to take the timing out of it, me having to time everything exactly right. The other thing that's happened is, now I haven't done this in years, but one of the things I did when I first did my research on the VIX and developed this strategy um, is that when the VIX gives you that buy signal, the market typically will run for several days. Now I've had a few that ran for 30 days. I've had a few that only ran for a day or two. But on average, you're looking at probably about a week and change of the market running based on the buy signal of being oversold. Now, I haven't, like I said, now, I haven't crunched those numbers in lovingly put 10 years, 12 years, haven't crunched them, but that's what they were. So I basically what I was looking at is, is to try and figure out when I take a position, how long to hold it using the VIX as my indicator, how long to hold that position. That's what I was looking at. All right. Um... I got a couple minutes left. I know we talked about a lot of things. I know I probably lost some of you. Some of you come on late. But again, um, just to rehash. Oh, but before again, everyone needs to know, and I say it again, that I will post this on IGTV. I will also post this on my YouTube channel. So again, you can always, if you leave and come back or you came in late, you're not sure, you can always go and pull it up and listen to it. Um, the other thing I was going to say, though, is is that, once again, GameStop, AMC. Now, here's what's interesting. GameStop, AMC, Ford, enough Ford, um, Coca, um, um, Kodak, American Airlines. If you look at all the stocks that they're, pu that they're pushing, they're stocks that, one, they, um, they have a huge short position, but two is they're in trouble. These are companies that really are in trouble, all right? What I mean by in trouble is they're not doing a good job running the business. Either their product services become obsolete or management just has no idea what they're doing. So for those who think that hedge funds by shorting stock are un-American, it's actually more American than you can think about. And the reason why it's more American is let's take those assets from GameStop. Let's take those assets from AMC, all right, and, re and take them and, and, and repurpose them to something that can actually make money for a business. There are assets, there are valuable assets there that are not performing. Let's 
find a corporation, find somebody that's gonna help them go out of business, somebody take them over and, or buy those assets and repurpose them. So I guess what I'm saying to you is, if the stock has no fundamentals behind it, do not buy and hold. It's not an investment. If, this, if you buy it and it goes against you, cut your losses and get out. It's a trading vehicle. It is what it is. You don't buy a school bus and take it to the track formula track to race it. You don't buy a formula car for a family of five to take the kids to school and go grocery shopping. All right? GameStop is what it is. It's speculative. It's a trading vehicle. Trade it. Make your money. Go about your business. Cut your losses, but make your money. Go long, go short. Trade it. But don't hold it. All right. If you hold it, I, I, I don't want to hear the horror stories. I don't want you guys to be the people that I talk about like, I can't believe they held that stock. And then all of a sudden they lost all their money. I had those horror stories in 2007 and 8. I heard those horror stories in 2001 when the dot-com bubble burst. I always hear these horror stories. Hopefully I don't hear the horror stories from you guys. All right. Um, I got to hop. You know, my time is running close. Um, Richard, the SP, um, Richard, what is this? I'm not familiar with the companies, Richard. M-A-R-X, M the Max R, SPC, Space Industry. Is this, is this like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, public storage type or is this cloud space? If it's cloud space, yeah, the industry's hot and it's not going anywhere. If it's cloud space, you know, cloud, you know, you know, you know, cloud technology, if you're doing that, yeah, you can go, you go, you know, pick pick out the best company in the group, but yeah, they're not going anywhere near term. They're not. If this is public storage type of company, you're dealing with real estate. Um, I don't do real estate much. Oh, space exploration. Ah, uh, eh, eh, I don't know. I just don't know. Just don't know. There's too many other places for me to look at to make money that I'm, I'm just not into that right now. Just, I just don't know. Too many, too many uncertainties for me. I'm not saying don't look at it. I just haven't, I just, I just haven't looked at it. There's too many things I'm looking at now that can put money in my pocket. So I'm not looking at it. Um, if I get a chance, I will take a check though. I will take a look. Um, it's a momentum play. Yeah, I'm a momentum player. If it's a momentum, momentum play, ride the momentum. You know, momentum plays like riding a wave at the beach on your surfboard. Ride the wave as long as you can. But once the wave starts to die or it starts to crash, you know, get off your board and go find another wave. All right, I got to hop. Appreciate you guys. Have a great week. Tell me about all the money you're making. Feel free to text me, you know, DM me on the chat. I, I, do, I do a lot of that. Um, who was I speaking? I'll speak with Lance um, a lot this morning. All right, so hit me up and I'll do my best to respond with some information that can help you put some money in your pocket. All right. I appreciate you guys. Have a great, great, great day.